Thank you for joining the Travel Fans Review of Sandals Royal Barbados. Now before you go, head to travelform.gov.bb to fill out the online immigration and customs form, which is mandatory, but free, and can be filled out only within 72 hours of your trip. Also, you need to know if you're heading to Sandals Barbados or Sandals Royal Barbados. Now the airport is nice and has rum, local music, and the line moves very quickly. To transfer to the resort, you can do the Sandals group transfer or private. Our very first travel fans tip, get the private transfer. It'll be a much better way to start off your vacation. When arriving at the resort, you will be handed a warm towel as you make your way into the lobby with a festive vibe and beautiful decor. We did have VIP check-in at the club, so we did have access to concierge, but not to be confused with having your own butler. The club does have a hidden bar, so help yourself to a cocktail. Travel fans tip, make sure you pack a bathing suit or anything that you'll need right away and keep it with you. The wait time for your luggage can prevent you from getting out and starting your journey around the resort. As you make your way to your room, enjoy the serenity of the surrounding palm trees and gorgeous views. We stayed in the beachfront penthouse club level suite with balcony tranquility soaking tub, which basically means we had an oceanfront room with a walkout balcony. The aspect of this room that was great is that you're up high enough to see the water over the trees. Now as you enter the room, the closet is there with plenty of storage and the usual items that you'd expect, such as hangers, a safe, and of course the plush robes that we have come to enjoy. Our room came with a fully stocked mini bar. This included the liquors that are of the inexpensive variety, such as whiskey, gold rum, vodka, and gin, but don't worry, there's no shortage of drinks at Sandals Barbados. The refrigerator was nice and stocked with waters, juices, mixers, and even some local beers that are replenished every evening. They even leave you some extra room to bring home the leftovers or fill the refrigerator with waters, which is what we did. The room was quite spacious and has a large king bed. If you like a firm mattress, then that is what you were likely to discover in your room, which could be perceived as a negative. But if you're like me and you've had some back issues, the firm mattress was actually quite nice. Now, next to the bed is a small sitting area to relax before getting ready for dinner. Or, like me, take a quick nap while the wife was getting ready for dinner. The walkout balcony has spectacular oceanfront views of the resort and also the main pool below. There's even a soaking tub and even a seating area for evening cocktails that we definitely enjoyed. The bedroom temperature was cool and very easy to control. Like many resorts, the air conditioning will turn off if the balcony is open, so make sure that it's closed if you wish to have the air on. Our bedroom had a very nice modern ceiling fan, and the AC can be controlled by the electronic thermostat. There's even a switch on the wall for the fan. Now the bathroom was one of the highlights of the room. It has great lighting and mirrors with ample storage and high-end soap products. One of our travel fans tips is to use the dead space beneath the sinks for your laundry. And of course, there is a standalone toilet within the confines of the bathroom. So hopefully this isn't your first day with your significant other. The shower was one of our favorite features with exceptional water pressure and this did include both a regular spout as well as a rainwater spout. It even included a window to enjoy the view simply by moving the sliding picture frame that's on the wall. This is great for when you're taking a shower and you get to enjoy. As you head down to the picturesque beach, take a look in the sand. There's really hardly any rocks, so you should be able to be on the beach or in the water without any water shoes you won't want to miss the coconut sign that tells you the weather simply by looking at the coconut that hangs there. Ironically, on our final day, we did get hit by Hurricane Tammy, but luckily there was no damage and we were able to travel on time. As you can see, there are plenty of beach chairs and umbrellas that are first come, first serve. They are not typically hard to get, but another travel fan's tip, the front row is almost always reserved by the butlers for their guests. Another reason to consider a butler if your budget allows. One of the aspects of this beach we love so much was the sand. This may be the softest sand we've ever felt, rivaled only by Paradise Island in the Bahamas. Either way, this is a perfectly manicured and visually stunning beach. Now, you will encounter some vendors occasionally, but most are friendly and won't be too pushy. As you approach the water, you will definitely feel the waves and the current but it usually doesn't get too crazy as there is a break wall that keeps them in check. As you make your way down the beach, you can see Sandal's iconic Hobie Cats, which are free to use if you feel confident enough to navigate on your own. Or if you're like us, you can bring along one of the crew from Sandal's for a very small fee. There's always plenty of options in the water at Sandal's resorts, from paddle boarding to kayaks 
and they even have snorkel gear as well. One of our favorite parts of this beach was at the edge of the resort with this collection of palm trees and a small rock wall. The feature is this angled palm tree, which creates a very unique opportunity for some photos. You can simply get your picture taken with these gorgeous trees in the background, or you can have someone standing under the tree making it look like they're actually holding it up. The water on the beach has many of those beautiful Caribbean colors. It was a bit murkier than we expected compared to places like Exuma, Grace Bay Beach in Turks and Caicos, and even Seven Mile Beach in Grand Cayman, but we figured it was because the current was a bit stronger here than those other islands. The break wall does a nice job of keeping the waves under control. Usually near these rock structures, you can find some wildlife, but to be honest, we really didn't see too much. But it could have just been the rum that we were enjoying. One of the cool features of this beach is that you can walk out pretty far without getting too deep into the water. Another travel fan's tip is to watch the sunset on this beach. It is absolutely stunning. The way the sun reflects off the beach and the waters crashing to the shore create the perfect opportunity for pictures with your loved ones or just a chance to sit on the beach and soak up the beauty. We'd highly recommend grabbing your favorite cocktail, putting your feet in the sand for this amazing show. Over at the main pool area is the main infinity pool. This will have some of the daily activities and more of a festive vibe than the other pools. There are rafts available, but you may find yourself fighting for one. Another travel fan's tip is to use the raft as a floating bar for you and your crew. Since you are so close to the beach, this is a much more popular area, often very difficult to get reserved chairs. In fact, we tried to reserve chairs as early as 5 a.m. and they were mostly all reserved already. This was one of our least favorite challenges of the resort. Again, this is where we'd recommend a butler, if your budget allows, as they will reserve the chairs for you. There are several other pools that we will cover later as well. One of the pools was the main pool, but the swim-up bar was under construction, so we really didn't go to that pool. But you can see the Infinity Edge offers some great photo opportunities. If peace and tranquility is what you seek, then this quiet pool may be for you. It doesn't have a view of the beach and it is tucked between two buildings. So if you are someone who likes to escape from the hot sun, this may be the pool for you. We did like the feature of the floating stones, like in Indiana Jones, The Last Crusade with the Leap of Faith, which of course we couldn't help but take goofy pictures and videos with our travel buddies. I'm certain this could function as a makeshift swim up bar if you were searching for that as well. Another travel fan's tip is to get up early one day to watch the sunrise from the rooftop. It is breathtaking, and what a great way to start any vacation day. There's plenty of seating and great photo and video opportunities to capture these moments. This was one of our favorite areas of the entire resort. This was the rooftop pool located at Sky Bar. Now this rooftop area did have stunning, sweeping views of the entire resort and the beach. It was very unique. The infinity edge on a rooftop pool was definitely a unique feature of this resort. Right next to this pool is a hot tub, which is great for an early morning plunge before the sun gets too hot. Another travel fan's tip is that there are plenty of chairs here and they're not that hard to get. The crowd here is a much later arriving crowd, so you should have a good chance of getting a chair. There's even covered seating and spaces for those who may need a break from the sun the rooftop bar was by far one of our favorites and an excellent place to have a few cocktails. One of the things to keep in mind about this area is that it may not be available every day. In fact, when we were there the one afternoon, it was completely reserved for a wedding party, which I have to admit is a really cool place to have a wedding reception. So something to keep in mind if you are planning on getting married down here in Barbados, or if you're planning out your vacation and you're trying to figure out which day you want to spend at which pool or the beach, or wherever your journey takes you. Now let's talk about entertainment. One of the things that we found is that the events happening really didn't match with the published daily and weekly schedules. For example, this one time we were just walking through and found the Steel Drum Band, which was great to hear. So sometimes you might just need to go on an adventure and find some live music, like we did one time on the rooftop bar. The lobby bar is another great place to explore. It's the bar in the main area. It has a huge fan and this keeps everyone cool. Now let's talk about restaurants. This was the most disappointing feature of the resort. Overall, it's very difficult to eat. Reservations are a mess. 
and several of the high-end restaurants won't even allow reservations without a butler, but then they also won't allow walk-ins either. So we find ourselves scrambling for meals quite a bit with a ton of waiting. The French restaurant, La Parisian, had good food for both breakfast and dinner, but the wait times and service times left something to be desired, to say the least. Oddly enough, you can't even get cappuccinos or lattes at this breakfast spot. Speaking of breakfast, we did have coffee at Café de Paris each morning, and this was a much more enjoyable experience. It is basically the only thing open at 6.30 a.m., as most places don't open until 7 or sometimes 7.30 a.m. Now they do serve crepes, gelato, and pastries, in addition to your favorite coffee beverage. This was quite tasty. Spices was another breakfast location with standard breakfast buffet items. Just be aware that it is mostly outdoors and there is no air conditioning. Portofino's is the Italian restaurant and we found it to be just above average. The polpette, linguine, and penne with ragu were terrific whereas the Caesar salad and the chicken, just average. Now let's talk about the Jerk Shack. Overall, this was a huge disappointment. For one, you can't eat there at the outside tables unless you have a shirt on, which might be good to know before you head there for lunch. Also, I was the first person in line. I placed my order, then I waited over 30 minutes for my food. One of the lesser known restaurants was Heart and Soul. We love this. Now it's hidden in the back of the resort, so you have to go searching for it, they have delicious and quick healthy bites and was our quickest meal while we were there. A travel fan's tip is to get a smoothie and go stop at the bar next door for a rum floater for your walk back to the pool or the beach. American Tavern was an indoor buffet that is air conditioned and does have your standard buffet selection. One thing we loved was the cheeseburger with an egg on top of it. Also, if you enjoy Indian food, we thought Bombay was very good. The portion sizes were small, but you can always get an appetizer or add another dish to try. Dino's Pizzeria is the pizza place that's right on the beach. We thought the pizzas were average and the wait times were a bit long, but it did serve the purpose of being able to eat lunch on the beach. Lastly, we ate at Butch's Chop House, which is not to be confused with Butch's Steak and Seafood. The steaks were good, but the size, not so good. The green beans were saturated with red pepper flakes, the fries were grossly undercooked, and it didn't help that we waited about 45 minutes. There were several other restaurants that we just ran out of days so we couldn't eat there, or we couldn't go at all because of the reservation situation, which was truly disappointing. So if you decide to head to Sandals Royal Barbados, at the end of this video, there are travel fans tips that you will need to maximize your trip and create beautiful memories of a lifetime. So don't forget to subscribe and save this video for those tips. Overall, we had a great time at Sandals Royal Barbados. The resort is beautiful and the pools were spectacular. The rooftop infinity pool had stunning views and was a very unique location to enjoy a day in the sun. I don't know if we will ever return to this resort given the challenges we faced with not being able to get reservations, the restaurants not allowing walk-ins, and just some of the difficulties with getting food that just seemed unnecessary. Thanks for joining us on our trip to Sandals, Royal Barbados. We hope you enjoyed it, especially our travel fan tips, where we give you information that you won't be able to find on the resort's website, TripAdvisor, or any other third-party apps. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button for more reviews and become a part of travel fans.